Good morning guys or good afternoon. I'm going to do a wear test and review on the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I have the, the shade C6. I'm almost done with it and before I finish it, I thought I would do a wear test on it. I am starting my day off kind of late. It's 11.25 right now, so I'm going to try to do a full 8 hour wear test. <laughs> Probably have to use my ring light later tonight. But we shall see how this goes. So the claims on Mac's website is that this is a comfortable, lightweight, fluid foundation with a unique blend of emollients that delivers sheer, buildable coverage and a satin finish. The moisturizing, long-wearing formula glides onto the face and and body, providing stay true color. The size that I have is in uh, 50 ml, so that's 1.7 fluid ounces, and it retails for $30. There are 13 shades available. This is a beautiful, beautiful foundation for photography, um, weddings, stuff like that. I've even used it in films, and I, it looks really great. It looks very skin-like. It You can add a very thin layer for a very sheer coverage or build it up a little bit. I don't like applying more than two layers of this because I get very greasy with this foundation and I get greasy because I'm combination skin. I'm more normal on the outer part of my face and a little grease ball in my T-zone area. So this is a foundation that I do enjoy but I have to set very, very well. <sighs> And I have to use a mattifying kind of primer. This one's not as great, but this is the one that I have been using because I'm trying to work it out. It does get oily throughout the day, even when I set it very well. But I don't mind. I don't mind having to touch up because it it's very it's a very skin like foundation and I like picking it up with a dense foundation brush. I have used it with a sponge like this one or a beauty blender or even like a stipple brush like this but for me to maximize coverage of this foundation because it is on the sheer side I prefer picking it up with something quite a bit dense so I have quite a bit of it here and I just try to work it really well into my foundation or my foundation brush and then go in and tap it in place I think this would be great if you have normal to dry skin. If you're very oily, I would not recommend this because I'm combination and in the winter I tend to dry out a little bit more but I still get greasy in my T-zone and sometimes depending on how I apply it and how I set it, I become a major grease ball. So if you're normal to dry, you would adore it, I think. And you probably wouldn't have to set it. It has this very kind of pretty sheen to it so it looks a little bit lighter I mean darker for me you can see because I've darkened I've lightened up a little bit and it brings up more of the yellow in my skin so what I like to do is apply a very thin layer all over I like to let it settle for a little bit and then go in with a second layer for a little bit more coverage. This isn't something that I get a full coverage, though, like full coverage, flawless finish in the end. But I personally prefer a light to medium coverage, more leaning medium, medium coverage, even medium to full coverage. I really enjoy. I don't like my skin to look completely like there's nothing going on in it, like no. Mm, hyperpigmentation, no discoloration, nothing like that. I do prefer for that to, to show through foundation because to me it looks more like a skin in reality. Nobody's skin is completely perfect. I mean, unless you're like an angel or a goddess or something like that. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit more, not as much as before, so that much and work it again into my brush. One thing that I have noticed is that as I've gotten past the halfway point, it's gotten very, very messy in this area. So be mindful if you are a makeup artist and you're carrying this in your kit, just be mindful of something like that. But this is a foundation that I would carry in my kit and I do plan on building on, on this little collection here. I would actually like, I wouldn't carry every single shade, probably the first, middle, and, and the last shade of each each undertone basically and then you can mix 
in between. I know they make a white one, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that you can use along with this foundation to um, lighten it up if you need to. So as you can see, the more I build it, the darker I feel like it looks. So something like this for me would be best to use a lighter concealer to kind of balance everything out. I don't think I have a concealer quite like like that that's very skin like um like that has that very skin like texture i do have my bare minerals uh concealer but it is it's it's not it's almost as dark as this i want to say maybe a little bit lighter so i may end up using that one and that's something to be mindful of i like using a concealer that's very similar to the finish of this because to me it doesn't look right with this on my face and then using like a full coverage concealer it just doesn't blend into everything else as well because then I'll be full coverage under my eyes and then wherever I highlight and stuff and then the rest of my face has this which is very skin like you know skin's peeking through the foundation it's been a couple minutes so it's settled in I feel like this especially this side I don't know why this side is looking less glossy than this side right here but this is what someone looks like when they wake up in the mornings you know when you have those oils from the night I feel like it looks so pretty and you can still see you know scarring here scarring here but it kind of evens everything everything out it looks really really pretty you see that alrighty so I'm gonna finish off my face and I will come back once it's done so you guys can see everything how everything looks together and then I'll try to do a couple of check-ins depending because I won't be home actually just kidding I wanted to show you guys what I like doing with this foundation or how I like to set it so I'm just grabbing a translucent setting powder and I stack it up in the areas where I need it I do not do this with every foundation because not every foundation needs it this is how I make this foundation work and I don't mind doing it because I like it so much I don't have a problem with it and I tend to do this mainly in my t-zone area if I don't do this within the hour I'm very greasy to where when I do this within the hour I have a little bit of, of glow going on but not as greasy right in this area And I try to make or press the powder in and just work it in very well into the skin right in this area too. I just want to show you guys how I like or what I like doing with this foundation. If in case you have it and you're oily and you don't enjoy it as much, this is what I tend to do with it so I can enjoy it while I'm finishing it off just press it in until the powder almost disappears and the powder that I'm using is the Lancome this is the mattifying powder I think if you're extra greasy and have this foundation the Laura Mercier would work very very well in doing this technique and then I'll go in with the beauty sponge that I use for my concealer I just get the butt of it and just press it in further I'm not moving it around because I'm not trying to disturb anything I'm just pressing it in and I feel like the moisture or the little bit of moisture that's left here I don't like my sponge to be completely soaked but there's a little bit of moisture in here locks it in for me just do that you see that? and it still has the slightest bit of sheen to it just the, the smallest amount really like that ok 
Okay, I'm done getting ready. It is now, let's see, 12.07. I, I try not to put anything that has a glow, glow to it. So my bronzer and my blush are both matte and I didn't put a highlight on so that you can, can see what kind of a glow this foundation provides. Sometimes I do wear a highlight like in this area here, but a lot of the times I stay away from some like illuminating products under my foundation, which you guys know, I've mentioned before, if, you, if you're new to my channel, you may not know, but I do mention a lot that I like liquid highlighters under foundations, uh, fuller coverage foundations or more mattifying foundations. But for this particular foundation, I don't like doing that because it's already a glowy kind of kind of foundation for me. And as the day goes on, because I get greasy, I don't need anything else, you know, to make it more shiny. So this is what it looks like with powder, bronzer, and a matte blush. Just to show you guys. Can it settle down now? Yeah, there it goes. So whatever glow you're seeing is coming from the foundation on its own. The powder that I use is the Lancome Mattifying Powder. This is in Translucent. The blush that I used is my MAC Blush in Pink Pinch Me. And the bronzer is from Wet n Wild. It's one of those little duos. I think this one is called Dulce de Leche. Whatever is on my lips and whatever's on my face, I will go ahead and list it down below. So I'm going to check in maybe in a few hours. I will try to. If not, next time you guys see me won't be until my final check-in to show you guys how this foundation has worn through the entire day. So I'll see you guys later. All right, there's still daylight, thank goodness. I got home a little bit ago and then I started making dinner, but it is now, let's see, 3.43. Let's see. I think it looks more beautiful than it did when I initially applied it because there's some glow going on on the skin. I am getting a little extra greasy right here and right here. So I started noticing a little glistening kind of look a couple hours in. So when I got in my car because we went to the doctors when I got in my car I think it had been a couple hours later I already had a little bit of glow going on in this area right now I was in the kitchen so it was a little bit warm so some of my oils have come out a little bit more but I think it still looks I feel like this makes everything look really good you can see the extra glow In that area. I love how it looks. I love it. I think it looks so pretty. Whoops. <laughs> I meant to zoom out, not zoom in. I'm going to check back in maybe I to give it a few more hours. So it's almost been about four hours since my last since I finished my entire face. I think I'm going to do maybe another 4 hours, so 8, 8.30, something like that. I'll try to check back in. I am going to have to have my ring light on though because it's going to be pretty dark. It starts getting dark. Actually, the sun's already coming down now. I'm surprised it's not already. So by the time I come back, it is going to be pretty dark. So I'll have my ring light on. You can see all my, my polishes right there. I had them in a box. My daughter's using them for a project, so she needed the shoe box. And now I have to, I'm forced now to put that away. The box was hiding my mess, basically, of polishes. All right, I'll check back in in a few more hours. Time got away from me. It is now almost 9.30. So nine and a half hours of wear on this foundation. Let's do a little closer, shall we? I'm looking really, really oily in this area, in this area, my nose, oh my gosh, and here. I just touched my chin, so it removed some of the some of the oils that I had there. Let me turn off my ring light here. You guys see? It's the beauty of your ring light, guys. It kind of softens things up a little bit, and even with that, I don't think you guys can see how much oil I have on my face. I've been wanting to take my makeup off now for a good two hours, but I did want to 
can get a full eight hour wear and then it just kind of got away from me. So although very, very greasy in this area, the foundation has still held on very well. It doesn't look broken up like some foundations do. It starts looking really kind of curdled on the skin. Not at all. I am missing foundation in this area here and missing foundation in this area. Usually these are the points where I normally tend to lose it. And then I have some food here. So it looks oily but the, the coverage is still there which is what I love about it. And here also missing some because I was eating. And I'm never too careful, especially when it comes to food. So let's turn this baby up on again. Dude, I am so greasy. Oh my gosh. Ooh, Lord. With this foundation, usually I tend to touch up a few times during the day. You see that? Because I get so oily. I don't have one of the oil absorbing little sheets on hand right now. So this is what we're using today. And everything's falling apart, even my mascara. Let me just touch base on a couple things here. Um, just to kind of reiterate some things they have 13 shades $30 per foundation uh, 1.7 ounce or fluid ounces is what you get there is a larger size I want to say it's a lot larger almost double the size not double the size but it's a lot larger than this one it is long wearing it is a buildable foundation but I can never build it to be full coverage I would say more medium coverage for sure I cannot wear this foundation in the summer. I would get extremely oily. This is a foundation that for me strictly works best during the winter time. I have found that for my preferred way of application is with a dense brush or with my hands. I feel like it gives me max amount of coverage for it and it just applies it so much better than a sponge because this is a foundation that's um, on the liquidy side. A sponge doesn't work so well for me because number one, it adds moisture because it would be a damp sponge and I don't need any more moisture added onto the skin. Number two, I feel like the sponge soaks up too much of the foundation. So a lot of it is, is staying in the sponge and not so much on my face. So it's kind of a waste of money. A lot of the times when I have applied it and I just want to run out the door and I don't use any concealer or anything else like that, I will usually just kind of squeeze it onto my hands just warm it up with my hands and then just go in and just apply it onto my face and then go in with a dry sponge and just press it into the skin so there's no lines or anything like that so everything's kind of evened out and then I'll usually just powder it in my t-zone and I'm out the door if I need to go I don't know run errands really quick or drop my kids off at school but I need to go into the office and I'm looking really rough that day and I need a little bit of assistance sometimes I will do that because it's a very easy easy foundation to apply easy foundation to just kind of slap on and be out the door without having to do much of anything else so highly recommended of course uh, combination skin you just have to be a little bit more mindful about it and making sure that you're setting it really well normal to dry skin highly recommend it you may have to set it but if you're very if you're severely dry I don't think you would need to set this foundation at all and it would look really beautiful because it looks like skin it's just it's just amazing I really love it it is a foundation that I plan on repurchasing again at some point as well as I mentioned before purchasing more for my kit so that is everything guys. I hope you found this video, this review super helpful. I know this is a long video, but I wanted to give you guys as much information as possible. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.